So today we're going to be testing out some watercolours, my most expensive and my cheapest. Let's see how they compare. My cheapest set of watercolours is from a brand called Major Brushes. Now I can't quite remember if my nan gave me these when I was younger or I took them from my high school. One of the two. So the price of these watercolours are £3 for the tin of 12 Now I know you can get cheaper sets than this, but this is the cheapest set I own personally. I did previously own one from Poundland, which was a pound, but I think I threw it out in my last big sort out of my room, so I don't have it anymore. So this is officially my cheapest palette. This is the set I had back in high school when I was doing my GCSEs. So it's a very old palette. Before I talk about how the paints compare, I will say that this illustration was done for Draw This In Your Style over on my Instagram. If you guys would actually like to participate in that, that would be amazing. Now, I was going to do a video about Draw This In Your Style, but the trends kind of died now. But if you still want to see a video like that, please let me know down in the comments below. And I will definitely feature some of the people who have already participated in my Draw This In Your Style tag. First off, with the Major Brushes watercolour, they surprised me in terms of laying down the colour because I could actually mix really, really beautiful colours. The only downfall and disappointment for me was when they dried and the colours just disappeared. It's like most of the pigment evaporated out of nowhere and it was such a shame. Something else that was really hard to do with these watercolours was layering. Layering just became really difficult after a certain point. There wasn't really much more build up that you could get. I especially found that in the hair because I couldn't get the right colour because it wasn't drying the right colour. So I resorted to layering, but even that didn't work and it was really sad because you could tell these watercolours were trying. They were trying to do something that they just couldn't do and I've got to give them credit where credit is due. Another thing to consider is the age of these watercolours. Maybe that played a role in it. I'm not entirely sure if it did or not. I can't really be sure. But if it did, then these watercolours have stood the test of time. You could say that. So recently I have gotten into bullet journaling and these watercolours seem to be very, very good for my bullet journaling because they're not too pigmented, they can create light washes. I think for simple things, these watercolours are amazing and great for it. I hope the light washes in this illustration are good enough for me to show in this video due to the fact that my bullet journal is quite private. A lot of the pages have very personal information on them, so I can't really share it, but just take my word for it, it's a good watercolour palette for that purpose. Just not this kind of illustration work that I usually do. For those of you who are curious about the paper, it is my Dale Rowney hot press paper. I just thought I would use them for both of the pieces. One, to give the Major Brushes watercolour a chance, and two, to make it a more of a controlled test because that's my usual watercolour paper. I would say the last gripe I have is that when it fully dried it was kind of dusty in texture and the paints just were more opaque and covered the line work a lot more. It's not really a major deal breaker to me but I just thought I'd mention the texture of the paper when there's paint on it and the opaqueness of the paint. Whether that's a word, I don't know, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But overall, they laid down really, really nicely and surprised me quite a lot. They were very easy to work with and definitely something that could be classed as a beginner's watercolour or a budget watercolour for those of you on a budget. 
Now we go on to the expensive watercolour, the Schminky palette. Now this particular palette is the Academy palette of 24 and it is currently retailing on Amazon at £65.20p. Now this price does change and also Schminky is known for being way more expensive. So in terms of value, this palette is probably the most value for money in terms of schminky sets. Obviously, academy meaning that they are more student-based paints, so they would be cheaper, but yet they still have the quality of schminky. So right off the bat, I was actually really, really happy with how the colours looked in terms of swatches. They were very bright and vibrant, but I was also surprised at how similar they looked to the Major Brushes watercolour. But swatches don't really give you an idea of how they paint, they just give you an idea of the colour payoff. Now the pigment in this paint was definitely performing because it didn't even dry disgusting. It was just so pretty and vibrant and I loved every minute of it. The formula was quite creamy. Not my favourite formula consistency personally. I think everybody has their own personal favourite watercolour that they've used. For me, my favourite watercolours are hands down the White Knights watercolours, which I actually got the same Christmas as the Schminky paints. They're also a little bit on the cheaper side, they're definitely more for your money. They're full pans, whereas this Schminky set has half pans. I know I just started to go on about White Knights watercolours, but I know this question will probably pop up in the comments at some point, so I thought I would just answer it now. <laughs> Back to the Schminky watercolours, the colour mixing was incredible. I loved mixing different colours with this. However, there is this feeling with expensive watercolours. This goes for all brands. It feels like you're wasting so much pigment, especially if it's for something like a tester. And I feel like this is especially true with these watercolours because they are only half pans and because of that and the creamy consistency it feels like you're scooping out the pans every time you're using them it feels so so wrong but you know that it's going to create something lovely I suppose that is where the major brushes watercolors actually win on this part because you don't feel as if you're wasting them because you know they're cheap. You know you can just get another one if you run out. It's a very cheap fix, whereas if you run out of these colours, you'll have to replace them, which could end up to be a lot of money, especially if you've used a lot of the colours. There was something else that wasn't a problem, but it also wasn't a good thing either. It was kind of like in between neutral for me. The drying time. The drying time was definitely a factor because with the Major Brushes watercolour it was almost instant that it dried and I liked that because that way I could actually do layers really really quickly and I could build up that opacity quicker. However, the Schminky took longer to dry. However, the colour payoff was better on the first go than having to build up so many more layers. So I suppose it kind of equals out to the same. I just thought I'd mention drying time because I thought it was interesting. But especially towards the end with the drying time, it was a big problem because it was lifting up big areas. So I had to bust out my heat gun so I could actually dry it so I could have multiple layers and it wouldn't take forever. I think the most important thing to mention about the Schminky watercolours is that they're more of a professional brand of paint and also their light fastness is a lot better. It means they won't fade so much over time. I know that the Major Brushes watercolours are not light fast so they will fade over time. Because I already have a lot of watercolours, I could not really justify buying them myself. So, because I never know what I want for Christmas, 
So that's how I justify nowadays getting new watercolours, unless they're in a scrawler box or an art supply company sends them to me. If you watch my live streams long enough, you'll know I have a watercolour addiction. <laughs> For those curious, the character in this illustration is my jellyfish queen, Aquaria. She was named after the Spyro level Aquaria Towers from Spyro 2 Gateway to Glimmer or Ripto's Rage. I'm not going to say too much about the character universe that she's included in, but I will say that I want to do a future video on just explaining the whole universe because I've had many requests to do that and I'm more than happy to do that as well. I also just want to pick up doing more videos in general. I haven't uploaded for the last month. I've been on holiday for the last week. And before that, my motivation was pretty low. So now that I'm refreshed back off holiday, I really want to get back into making videos again. So with that being said, if you like this video, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new because I am going to be posting more videos from now. I really hope I keep up to my word. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.